All right, welcome back everybody. This is part two of the Bezier curve graphs. So today we are going to be deriving the normals for our uh, Bezier curve to uh, fix our grass blades lighting. So here we can see on the left side our incorrect normals. We've got um, kind of the underside just being one solid color, the top just one solid color. Basically it's treating the grass blade here like it's a flat plane. So uh, the good news is we don't need to actually solve for the derivative of ourselves, so no calculus here because it's already well known and we can find it right here on Wikipedia. So we can see that the derivative of a cubic, oh actually that's the cubic, let's go up to um, quadratic here, right? The derivative of the quadratic Bezier curve with respect to t is what we're looking for, which is uh, 2 times 1 minus t times p1 minus p0 plus 2t times p2 minus p1. So um, essentially what we're doing here is if we look at our uh, Desmos here, I've added um, this line which represents our tangent. Right? So we can see that as we sample along our curve, uh, we have a tangent line. And if we just simply rotate this tangent line by 90 degrees, we'll get the grass blades normal at that point um, t along the blade. So what we have to do is find this and rotate it 90 degrees. So um, going back to our formula here, we can first see, again, we need um, to get a constant of 2. We are going to get t, so go to our named reroute. Since we saved t, we grab t. And we need to 1 minus t, which will then be multiplied by 2. So this solves our, uh, this uh, gets our first part, t times 1 minus t, or excuse me, 2 times 1 minus t. And then we need to multiply that by p1 minus p0. So we'll get a subtract. And then we're going to go to grab our named reroutes, grab p1 and p0. So p1 minus p0. So that's our um, first part of this expression here. Then we need 2t times p2 minus p1. So we're going to get another subtract. And we're going to get p1 again. And we're going to get p2. So p2 minus p1. All right. And then we need to take that and multiply it by 2t. So we'll grab a multiply. And we'll grab t, we'll grab 2, so that's 2t, multiply that together, and then both of these expressions need to be added together. So uh, this should uh, give us our tangent um, in 2d space. Uh, so first we need to uh, rotate it. So one quick tip is that you can rotate a vector 90 degrees simply by multiplying it by, uh, well, depending on the way that you want to rotate it, um, minus 1x and, uh, uh, and 1y or minus 1yx, and then swizzling the coordinates, which we'll do in a minute here. Uh, but we also need to uh, make it 3D. So we're going to break out float 2, and we're going to make it into a float 3. And this is where we're going to do our swizzle. So we are going to want our R to be, I believe, Z, our G to be X, 
and we need a third orthogonal vector to our first two. Uh, so we will use a cross product. And then just to be safe here, let's go ahead and normalize our uh, whole thing here. Plug this into our normal map. And let's see. Did we do it right? Let's go ahead and drop in the sphere. We can see that on get rid of this plate of grass here. On this side of the the grass here, it matches the sphere. So we come around over here, it appears to be matching. If I rotate this blade of grass, it matches, tilt it down. Great. Let's go ahead and check the underside. That looks right. That looks right. Awesome. So we've got our correct normals on um, the vertex level. And they're working regardless of our rotation. So that's good. And then we can also see if we go in and adjust our uh, parameters here. So I've got my midpoint. Normals are moving correctly. Set this back at 0.5. And if I move this down here, you can see that we have a flat normal when our grass blade is flat. And as it becomes increasingly curved, our normal gets sharper and sharper. So let's go ahead and look at it in lit view. We can see that we are getting the kind of shading we'd expect to see, where it's shaded on the other si underside and it's lit on the top. Looks good. Let's go ahead and change this to two sided foliage. And then let's. Um, Give it subsurface color. So that is how you calculate the normals for the Bezier curve and translate them into 3D space. Um, let me know if you're interested in uh, any continuation on this series or any additional things that you might want to see. Um, I can explore some of the other techniques used in the shader for the grass or just talk more about um, you know, grass rendering in general or whatever. Uh, so leave your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, but let's just go ahead and maximize this so everybody can see clearly what we have here. So here is the normal map. And then here is the rest of the shader. The name. So all of this down here is for Blade width. Then 
all of this here defines the Bezier curve. And then this transforms it to the relevant 3D plane. And so again, this is totally procedural. Obviously right now um, we're defining this with parameters in the material, but you could easily uh, use, you know, for example, per instance, custom data that's being randomly generated by your procedural systems to feed in to um, this. You can use, um, you know, per instance, random, um, and then use this to interpolate between um, some sort of minimum and maximum value for your blade of grass. Uh, to make it completely random. Whatever you feel like is um, your preferred method to um, ultimately define these characteristics, but they basically will allow you in doing so to define these parameters or ranges for the parameters to get any shape and look that you want. Um, beyond that, there's nothing particularly special about it. If you do um, decide to add wind, um, make sure to add that wind to the control points, right? So for example, you could add wind to change the position of a control point by using uh, noise is what they use in Ghost of Tsushima. Um, and because you're changing the control point, that will automatically feed into the normal. And as the wind adjusts the position of the blade of grass, you'll automatically get correct normals for the world position offset as well which is not something that you typically get with um, something like uh, the simple grass wind, which doesn't have any way to correct the normals of um, the grass blade or the, the foliage as it's changed, whereas this can maintain correct normals. Um, we can look at that in more detail later if there's interest, but uh, that's all I really wanted to cover in this video. So again, let me know what else you wanna see. Thanks for watching, see ya.